Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. Today I want to be talking about a very recent release. Uh, it's holiday season once again, so of course I had to cop the 11s this year. Uh, I love this one so much that I actually decided to start playing in them. Uh, this right here is the Air Jordan 11 Varsity Red, or better known as the Cherry. Retail price for these is set at $225 US dollars or $290 if you're also in Canada. I got these on release date. Both the Champ Store and Foot Locker had a full size run. I think if this was a shoe that you kept an eye on, it shouldn't really be too hard to get, just like the previous Jordan 11 drops around the holidays. Now, even the Bread 11s in 2019, uh, Cool Grays, and also the Jubilee, they're relatively easy to cop during release, but they do sell out. Also, around this time of the year, it's pretty much discount time for a lot of hoop shoes, Jordan Retros included. Now, this colorway is nearly identical to the Cherry 11 Lows, a very popular colorway that we last saw in 2016. Or you can say the Blake Griffin PEs, but it's not really the same red. Not an OG colorway, but still simple and clean. And the way this red color turns out on this pair, it might just be one of my personal favorite Jordan 11 colorway uh, from the past three to four years. Uh, anyways, I've actually never played in a pair of 11s before. From 1 to 14, the only Jordan Retro that I played in was the 13s. I once tried to hoop in a pair of 4s during a game, and it honestly went so bad. So how does the Jordan 11 perform on the court, or can you hoop in these? Let's get right into some details. They come in the classic box for Jordan 11s. No uh, special coloring this time, like the cool grays last year. Very straightforward, you know what to expect if you have a pair of 11s. There's that garbage bag wrapping paper, I like to call it. No plastic shoe tree this time though, just paper stuffed inside. On the first look, it's a simple two-tone colorway with red and white, red Jumpman logo on top of the white upper base. The signature patent leather in that nice varsity red color. I have to say, if the red was any brighter than it is now, that might not do it, but this looks good in my opinion. 23 on the heel, and they come in those typical roll places for Jordan 11s. Flipping over to the bottom, it's got that mainly translucent also, from which you can see through the Jumpman logo in the middle, and there's a carbon fiber shank plate colored in red with some black dots on it. From the more performance perspective, I guess you would consider this as average padding. It's nice and soft in hand, but not secure enough around the ankle if you need some strong support there. This shoe obviously doesn't bend easily, and it's going to be on the heavier side, especially compared to the modern performance models. They're 460 grams for my size 10 and a half pair. But honestly, among the Jordan Retros, it's not like a super chunky or heavy feeling on feet. And like I said earlier, I usually just wear them casually. I think the 11s are just a timeless sneaker that you can dress up and down. In the NBA, sometimes you see players rocking these. I remember Iman Shumper really likes to play in the 11s. So did Andre Drummond for a while. Jeremy Grant is another player who wears a lot of Jordan Retros, and not just the 11s. Okay, now just in case you thought about hooping in these or wondered how they perform on the court, I would say that it checked the box in maybe two of the most important performance aspects to a lot of us and that is cushioning and traction. The cushioning is more like satisfactory. A comfort level is decent, not much stiff feeling on feet, and there's a little bit of compression in the heels, just a tiny bit. The transition feels okay too, and it's a more elevated core feel that you get. Now the traction is actually really good. It worked well for me on different indoor courts right from the start. Not the very squeaky type, but you can get to a hard stop with no problems at all. It also does pick up some dust, but as long as you wipe it off, it shouldn't really affect the performance. So yeah, great traction, and with the fit, they're true to size. About average width, and I think you can safely go with the same size you normally wear in other Nike or Jordan brand sneakers. I do think the lockdown is a little bit of an issue, mostly because of how soft the collar area is. So even as I tie the laces up through the top eyelid later on, if you want the most secure lockdown and best support, maybe not so much from these guys. Stability, I would say average. And so far out of the few times I've played in them, I didn't experience any major issues or discomfort. So if you're thinking about playing in them, as long as you can deal with the weight, also bad breathability, I don't see why not. So my quick summary is yes, of course you can play in the Jordan 11s. It's also probably one of the better ones to use from the Air Jordan Retros. I mean, if you're good or if you're confident enough, you can really play in anything that you like. But from a performance standpoint, these guys work. Let me know your thoughts on this year's Jordan 11 down in the comments. Did you manage to get a pair? If so, are you planning to wear them casually or keep them in the collection? Uh, or are you thinking about hooping in them? Don't forget to consider subscribing if you haven't done so. I have a lot of exciting videos and end of year recaps coming up. 
Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.